We all love starfish. Cute, slow-moving, harmless little creatures whose desiccated husks make for great souvenirs from your trip to Key Largo. But not all starfish can be as whimsical as Patrick Star. Some are far more strange and nefarious. The ironically named sunflower sea star is one such animal. Crawling across the seafloor at a disturbing speed, this enormous echinoderm has dozens of arms, eating whatever it can find, and even ripping off its own limbs. Why? Well, let's just say things are going to get a little viral here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. And today we're talking about an arms race that moves about three feet per minute. But more on that later. Terrifyingly more on that later. (laughs) Okay. All right. I'm Uh, interested as to why that's terrifying. You don't find this animal terrifying? No. Oh, I find it so scary. Anyway, we'll, (laughs) we'll talk about why it's not scary or why it is in a bit. You can make your own decisions. What are, we t- what are we talking about? It's the sunflower sea star. Or the sunflower starfish. S- starfish is a bit of a misnomer. Yeah. There's been a, a name revolution for, for these guys. Because they're not but, fish. But so jellyfish are not fish either, so... Yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> sea jelly? <laughs> Should we just call them that? Uh, we call them uh, ocean Publix bags. <laughs> yeah. No, that would, that, would, that would confuse the turtles even more. <laughs> They're like, so wait, it is a Publix bag or it's not a Publix bag? Because it looks delicious either way. <laughs> I'm just going to take a bite and and I'll ask f- uh, for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, it's called the Sunflower Sea Star, um, but we're going to call it here. The uh, Teeming Tentacled Trilobite and uh, John Stamos. Because, you know, he, the, the Sunflower Sea Star, he's no A star like Daniel Day-Lewis. He's definitely not a B star like Jeremy Renner. He's a C star like John Stamos <laughs> or, or like Ice Cube. I don't know if th- I think those guys are at least B. No way. Not I, ice, I guess ice I don't Cube. really know. Yeah, Ice Cube. He he's a multifaceted talent. He's an actor. <laughs> he's a musician. But as an so actor, so is John Stamos. John Stamos? Like, is he a musician? I guess he's a musician in the. In I the just show. feel like it's not. An, a, a household name if they're in B, in the C category. It's like John, oh, some people John know Stamos them. is is a household name. Ironically, <laughs> like how many John Stamos movies do you do you love? But he's in. You know, you don't have to be in a movie. He's in a beloved sitcom. Yeah, but that's it. Exactly. That's his claim well, to fame. Like, there's lots of really famous people that are in only only in one thing, and they're all C stars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All but they're definitely them. not starfish, because that's a misnomer. Yeah, that is a misnomer. Would you like to uh, leave in the comments somewhere on the internet whether you think John Stamos is in B tier or C tier? And uh, if you don't think he's in C tier, uh, give us your C tier actor. Yeah, like a good example of one? Yeah, it's it's the young kid from Spy Kids. It's the that That's a good like lower tier than John Stamos, whether like if he's I, in C or D or whatever. If you can't name him, then it's automatically then join him. <laughs> uh, would you like to uh, hear what science calls these things, or do you have other nicknames for them? Nope, that's it. Okay, let's let's get into it. It's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in. It's in the kingdom Animalia. It's in the phylum Echinodermata. This is our first foray into this uh, into this phylum. Is it? Did you know? These are animals with radial symmetry, which include sea stars, sea urchins, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. <laughs> okay. Radial symmetry meaning like no matter which, like if you bisect them in any way, they'll be symmetrical. Well, from a, uh, from a, I think what it's called a rostral view. Because, yeah, f- obviously like not from any, like only a sphere would be completely symmetrical on all oh true uh planes but there is there from the like i think a, a rostral plane it is it, it, no matter how you slice it it's the same neat okay it's in the class asteroidea asteroidae okay asteroidea asteroid it's a sea star asteroidea gotcha <laughs> i get it nice one science 
order. Do it. Four kip pula today. Four se pula today. Yeah, that's the second one. Sounds right. Yeah, uh, it's in the family Asteridae. 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 Again, I think mean meaning star ish heavenly body. It is. This one looks particularly like a sun, oh, or a sunflower. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's in the genus Pike. <laughs> Is it pike? Yeah, it's got to be pike na pike no podia. Like pycnopodia? Pycnopodia? Yeah. That's that's my guess. Whenever I see a c in Latin, I want to make it soft, but there's but, no vowel after it. Right, it is weird. Uh it's just a c to an n. That's that's advanced. Or if it's like nidaria, then it's you just take the c out of it, so it's pinopodia. I'm just looking at the next word. <laughs> <laughs> it's the species name is Heliantho Helianthoides. Yeah, this one was a rough one. I think he- Helia, like he, like Helios, like uh, the sun god in the Theros block of Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they were going for. Well, I'm sure that word probably has something to do with the sun. Probably because it's full of helium, mostly. And, and and I've said the binomial name. I'm not saying it again. You can just go and look it up to see it all together. <laughs> Pycnopodia helianthoides. Thoides. Okay. Yeah, so it's got that's that's quite a mouthful. Um, so we could just call it John Stamos instead if you want, or, or just the sunflower or the kid sea from star. Spy Kids. <laughs> <laughs> or would you uh, call it that kid from Spy Kids? Um, but since we're in the business of naming things, since we can't name the kid from Spy Kids, um, we'll we'll name the, uh, the the collective noun for this animal in my favorite part of the show critter groups the part of our little podcast here where i ask joe a question and that question is the same every time it's what is the name of a group of this animal what is the collective noun what is the uh term of venery i say that question is the same every time but there are three different ways to a- ask that question so <laughs> we, we do mix it up so joe what is the name of a group of starfish According to what I found on researchmaniacs.com, which was the most definitive answer I could find. Is it A, a block of starfish? Is it B, a spread of starfish? Is it C, a grasp of starfish? Or is it D, a constellation of starfish? Constellation is immediately removed from the list in my mind because it makes too much sense. I'm going to go with grasp because they are clingy. They cling to things with their two feet. So I'm going with grasp. Final Final answer. answer. The answer was constellation. Whoa. (laughs) It made sense this time. So the fact that it made sense and the fact that none usually makes sense just makes it all make less sense <laughs> it's not even consistent in not making sense you just gotta you have to go with your heart i actually went um with grasp because i have this like in middle school i had these like they, they would give us these planners that had these like facts in them like each day of the calendar there'd be a new fact and a lot of them were but like these Terms uh-huh. of entry. That's and how you got like an army of frogs a little yes, while ago. Yeah. Interesting. But give us give us some general info. Okay. Uh, well, first let's talk description. In case you cannot Google this. Although if you're driving somewhere, get back home. Unless you're doing some essential business. Arrive alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the sunflower sea star is a large starfish or as we've given that name up, it's a sea star, with a distinct sun or sunflower shape due to its abundance of arms. It's more than five. Uh, It comes in orange, yellow, red, brown, and purple sometimes. Purple is a fun color for an animal. Yeah, it's like blue, which is great, but then a little bit of red. That's all it takes. You know? <laughs> They're described to have a soft velvet texture. Some scientists touched it decided to put that in the description <laughs> I mean, it's like, hey uh tim I'm, I'm, ma- I'm making the wikipedia page here what should we put down for texture mm, soft and velvety 
<laughs> uh, first of all, uh, texture is not something we normally put for animals, but okay, uh, it's soft and velvety. <laughs> <laughs> what? So like every other animal has like furry, scaly for texture. They just need to fill in the texture uh, <laughs> blank there. Um, like other sea stars, they have a skeleton that's just similar to like this mesh structure that's per- that protects their squishy organs and stuff. Unlike a typical skeleton, if you look at it, it's like a a mesh, which is interesting and fun for the whole family. But that brings us to my favorite part of the show, a part of the show that uh, that is beloved by all, ex- uh, especially Carlos. Beloved by some. <laughs> beloved by the majority of listeners. The official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that was introduced by you, that is introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We have a new measure up intro this week from Alexi. You know who this is, Carlos. Yep. This is my cousin. She graciously decided to say measure up into my phone that I was holding in her face. <laughs> uh, and we are grateful. Uh, le- without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. <coughs> measure up. <laughs> uh, COVID, COVID cough. <laughs> the, the, the COVID measure up. Uh, I di- I disinfected my phone four times after that. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that was into the the uh, the back of her elbow or into a tissue. Uh, thanks. Regardless of uh, any um, fluid projections that came out of that measure up, we appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about arm span, which, let's, which let's is another way to say length or size or width or whatever. Right. Lucky for you, they are about a meter in arm span or 3.3 okay. 3 feet. Okay, so this is why this thing is terrifying. It's the size of a saucer sled. It's huge and it moves relatively fast for uh for uh, a starfish and it's it's just just look at this thing. It's got so many arms. It's this weird looking texture and it's it there's a mouth in the center. There's have you have you seen the end of Prometheus? That's the thing that 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 attacks everybody at the end. Except for you can just get rid of get away from it at a at a at a comfortable pace. Yeah, but what if it was just a little bit faster? It moves a body li- <laughs> What if it was different? <laughs> what if that it was be better? Scary. <laughs> it's just like I don't like I feel like what if we fell asleep and then that suddenly the thing was crawling on your chest? I'd lose my mind. I'd never be the same. Well, it would be scary if you were a sea urchin. Um no, but it would take up your whole. Ch- it's, it's it's three, it's three and point three feet in, di- in diameter. So just grab it and throw it like a frisbee across the the room. But it's already laid its eggs inside of your chest cavity. That's how it works, right? <laughs> no, as soon as it touches you, you 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 yeet that saucer, uh, into the next dimension. Oh, but don't how, say yeet on this show. <laughs> I've said taint it. this show with Ye- yeet. Yeet is yeet is my favorite thing that the kids are saying. Oh, I hope I hope it goes away like YOLO did. No, yeet's fun. No, it's not. But you go continue with your measure of. I'd rather uh, do that than listen to this. How many star, uh, sunflower starfish go into the height of the tallest sunflower? And I feel like when I saw the sun, this this sunflower, that we've done this before. But I don't remember it, if we definitively. So if we have, let us know. It sounds familiar. But maybe we're doing the highest like corn stock or something like that. That may be. I think that's it. Um, so here's a hint. Uh, the flower was grown in Karst, Germany by Hans Peter Schiffer. Uh, Hans Peter has held that same record twice before. They can get pretty big. I mean, 12 feet sounds tall. Um, and that would bring us, well, I'll say 13 feet to make it unlucky, but also to make it so that I can better do the math. So I'm going to say four starfish. Four. Final answer. Okie okay, dokie. Okay, okay. The correct answer is nine starfish. Oh my goodness. This thing is, this is a big, this is a big flower. 
The sunflower is 9.17 meters or 30 feet and one inch. That's how does it? It's a big boy. How does it stand up? It stands up with a because it's tied to like s- support. Oh, so it's more like a v- long vine. Kind of, yeah. It's a flower. It's a tall sunflower. And it's got like scaffolding built around it. So this guy was probably like this, doing his utmost this, at every every length of this flower to keep it going. I mean, this is probably how he puts food on the table is by maintaining the world's tallest sunflower. Right. Because people just pay it, like go to his Patreon and just shovel shovel buckets of money into it because they just love looking at this big, big flower. Do you, do you get paid to be in guinness are they like congratulations here's a check i don't know we're gonna come back next year to see if it's still alive and we'll give you some more money you get a certificate i don't think i don't know if you get money you can sell a certificate (laughs) you you probably could uh the number of arms let's talk about that there's 16 to 24 limbs so let's go with 24 how does the number of arms of a sunflower starfish Compared to the number of spiral arms in the Milky Way. So how many of what go into what? Oh, so I have to figure out. I think there are fewer arms in the Milky Way for sure. So here's a hint. After years of debate, a 2013 study confirmed the number of spiral arms that there are in the Milky Way. You can click on a link on this episode page on ldtaxonomy.com and you can read more about that study. This is It's got to be a really tough thing to decide or figure out considering that we're in the milky way and we have no way of leaving it to take a a nice picture of it from afar you just throw a camera into space yeah and then and then like a hundred and fifty thousand years later it could turn around and take a picture yeah maybe get like half of the milky way how many arms did you say 17 24 24 oh that's so many arms i just my my biggest fear is like being stranded in the middle of the ocean and then some giant tentacled beast draws me down and puts it in puts me into its like giant beak munches until i'm dead I drown i drown it's worse speaking of tentacles while you're thinking about that uh we made a mistake apparently octo uh, like an octopus doesn't have tentacles it has arms a squid has tentacles And that information comes to us from somebody on Twitter. Really? Yeah. That would have been a great know the difference. Do you know the difference? Between arms and... Yes. It comes from uh, the Jungle Gym Queen. (laughs) I like that name a lot. That is a pretty great name. She said, uh, I love the new episode about the Argonaut. Um, It's a really fun species that doesn't get nearly enough love. I actually have an Argonaut uh, specimen egg case, and she shows pictures of it, and it looks like pristine condition, even though this these things are like super fragile. Huh. But she also said that I'm going to be a bit of that person, though, and say octopuses only have arms, no tentacles. And I said, don't worry, we love we love that persons. We aren't experts, so if you if we say something stupid, don't don't hesitate to uh, let us know. Okay, so according to this, the National Aquarium, the difference, unless you have the difference on hand, uh, the difference is that tentacles only have suckers at the tip, while arms have tentacles all down their length. So that I mean- can tell you definitively that my arms do not have te- uh, suckers at all. So. So, yeah, I guess it only applies to cephalopods. So if you ever turn into a cephalopod, then you will be the exception. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, I guess squid have both and octopus. Octopuses only have arms. So thank you, Jungle Gym Queen. (laughs) Yes. Let us know if there's another like cool animal that you're fascinated by that we we can do and get wrong. (laughs) Do you have any idea about how many arms going? Oh, yeah, we're doing Uh, this. I forgot (laughs) forgot we were doing this. Um. I'm going to say four. I'm going to say there's six arms in the Milky Way. Um, and there's 24 arms in one of these starfish. So I'm going to say the answer is four. My my gut says that, but my, my head says six. But we're going to go with four. 
Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> the correct answer is six. No. <laughs> <laughs> six Milky Ways. The Milky Way has four spiral arms. Oh, I thought, like, I was visioning in my head and I was like, I think there's four, but if they just recently did some sort of crazy study about it, maybe they found out that there's two more that we thought were not well, they there. only they thought for the longest time there's only two. If you look at like older like de- depictions of the Milky Way, it'll have like two spiral arms. They look they just look like a, the little hurricane icon. Yeah. Uh but yeah, it's so close. Oh man. That was I should, for once I should have gone with my head. I should have thought about it more. <laughs> uh All right, let's get into the general info. Oh, by the way, these things weigh 13.4 pounds. That's a that's a chonky boy. Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's three and a half feet in diameter. It's it's huge. So let's let's get into it. Sunflower sea stars live into live in the American Northwest. The North, not in <laughs> they're not <laughs> they're they're not in like the Pacific Northwestern like forests or anything. They're that's even the, scarier. They're land <laughs> sa- starfish. They're crawling around on the forest floor. Ugh. No, uh, dropping down from trees. Oh, no, even worse. Nah. They live in the Pacific Ocean from California to Alaska. They particularly like Puget Sound, it seems, and Alaskan waters. They like it a little chilly, I guess. Okay, I'll save that for an after the fact if you don't talk about everything I'm going to talk about. Um, they enjoy areas that are rich with seaweed uh, in intertidal and subtidal areas. The sea stars move at about three feet per minute. Um, using their 15,000 tube feet. So they, they love to eat sea urchins. It's their favorite food. But they'll also snack on other slow prey like snails, clams, sea cucumbers, sea stars, or uh, dead and dying squid. Hmm. Uh, they reproduce by broadcast spawning, which is not a radio, radio dating program. Instead, it's a method of reproduction where a female will release eggs into the water for males to fertilize, like salmon uh, and a lot of other animals that live in the ocean and can just squirt out some eggs. Their larvae are platonic, and by that I mean planktonic. Let's keep it planktonic. They're plank. You know? They're plants. We're, we're moving too quickly. Let's keep it planktonic and only move with the currents. They're ideal and emotionless. Let's go with the, let's go with the flow. Let's keep it planktonic. Um, <laughs> That's a t-shirt. Uh, keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my planktonic friend, Plankton. <laughs> uh, so they feed on surface. They feed on the surface for several weeks between two and like 10 weeks before settling to the sea floor and transforming into juveniles. Hmm. And that's all I got for generalissimo info. Well, since we haven't done starfish before, starfish are actually really interesting, a really interesting uh, class of animals because they don't have a brain. This isn't the major fact, but they don't have a, a centralized brain, but they do have a complex nervous system in each one of their arms. And all of those arms are connected by an, uh, a nerve that goes around the center of the disc. It's kind of like a circle. And each one of the arms is um, autonomous. It's its own. It's almost like its own creature, even though it's pretty dependent on the other ones. Um, and each one of the arms has an optic nerve, or like an uh, like a little eye spot, an optic yeah, an optic nerve with an eye spot at the end, at the tip of the um, of the the arm, and also the there there are chemoreceptors. In the tip of the arm so it is constantly looking for prey by literally looking for it they're really primitive eye spots but um, mostly like getting odors um, in the water so if it if it de- detects the uh, chemicals of prey in a direction one that that particular arm will arrest control over the other arms and so that it the whole starfish moves towards the prey so it's kind of like, well, for a lot of starfish, they have five arms. This one is 24, but it's it's like 24 individual organisms that in a, in a heartbeat can instantly become one organism controlled by one of the arms. <clears throat> so if one of the arms is removed, um, then it can 
mo- most starfish, including the sunflower starfish, uh, can regrow that arm, which is, you know, we've, we've encountered other animals that can regrow arms, but some starfish can regrow another starfish from that arm. So the, the fir- starfish A that lost the arm will regrow the arm, and then starfish B, the detached arm, will turn into starfish B. Um, some starfish require some of the disc to be remaining, but some don't. Some require just the arm, and it'll just grow back um, the disc, the mouth, and then the remaining arms. It's really vulnerable during this time, um, and emotionally, yeah, it's it can. You just really want to watch what you say, because um, you know people can be hurtful. But yeah, so it's it's crazy that it can. Th- that's one way that it can just bud from itself. It can just turn into it can turn into two different starfish by doing that. But there's more to losing limbs um, than meets the eye, and it's time for the major fact. So Jesus says in Matthew five, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. And while he was obviously instructing us to flee from temptation and remove idols from our lives, the sunflower sea star took the passage a little too literally. These (laughs) sea stars and about 40 other species of sea stars are systematically pulling their own arms off until they die, which seems bad. And it is bad. So most starfish can pull off their own arms uh, if, or they can just like kind of release an arm. They can have, if... They can have one arm just at- like attach, like sucker to a piece of coral or rock or something like that, and then the rest of the the sea star will will pull away from the arm until it detaches. So actually ripping it off. Um, Yikes! But so, and and that's to fool predators or um, like if a king crab, which is its primary predator, comes and just grabs one of its arms, it can rip it off and and get away while the king crab is snacking although it gets away really slowly so the king crab can usually finish its meal and then just go pick up another arm um but these sea stars are are not pulling off their own arms for any advantage they just seem to be falling apart for no reason and it turns out that we are not the only ones going through a pandemic right now No one is 100% sure, but researchers think that this is the result of what they call sea star wasting disease, or otherwise known as sea star associated denzovirus. This is kind of like leprosy for starfish, um, highly contagious. Uh, And so here's the breakdown of what happens when a starfish contracts um, sea star wasting wasting disease the first symptom is that the star will stop eating and just kind of wander around aimlessly not going in any particular direction or towards food then white spots will start to appear and grow on the star's body leading to tissue damage um, that gets worse over time and um, so starfish and sea urchins use what's called a water vascular system to do pretty much everything. Everything is about moving water through their body, through these tubes, in order to uh, grip onto things, to move around, to move food through their digestive system, and even to breathe. Um, they're hydraulically powered. Yeah. they're. I mean, they're like mostly water, it seems. Um, Same. Yeah, you know, it's... It's amazing how much we have in common. They have arms. <laughs> we have arms. They have. They have pandemics. We have pandemics. They have nerves. I mean, we have nerves. It's great. We're starfish. <laughs> um. But so this this high water vascular system fails during the latter part of this uh, this disease, and so the starfish can't grip onto things anymore, and it um, it can still move. Um, but it kind of more just floats around um, and obviously can't defend itself or anything like that. And eventually, the body structure breaks down entirely and starts l- just leaving arms behind because the tissue damage is so great. Um, so while it looks like they're pulling off their arms like they would in a defensive situation, um, 
their arms are actually just falling off um, as the star drifts along. And then pretty soon after that, the starfish dies. And this entire process can happen uh, in the course of just a few days. And so the starfish have been hit with plagues like this back in the 70s. So there were a couple times that this happened in mass. Um, but the most recent one started in 2013 and has lasted ever since. So for the last seven years, they've been going through this. And you can see videos and pictures of thousands of sunflower sea stars littering uh, the ocean floor uh, off the coast of Canada in the Atlantic. Um, and no one, sure, no one is sure exactly... First of all, they're not 100% sure that um, it is a, it's even a disease. Um, I mean, clearly it seems like a disease, but they just don't have enough data about it to make definitive um, uh, claims about it. Um, and they're definitely not sure why it's happening. And of course, most people jump to, the, uh, to blaming global warming. Uh, since the disease since tends to be more prevalent in warmer areas. And there is a parasite that attacks these starfish and it thrives in warmer water. Um, and as you said, this the sunflower starfish likes cold waters. It's it's way up there in the uh, in the North Atlantic. Um, but there's also a North Pacific North Pacific and Atlantic also. Um, hmm. But the um, Oh, no, 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 wait, no, you're right. It's off the coast of British Columbia, which is on the Pacific. But the uh, the initial outbreak took place in colder waters, and there's they can't find an actual correlation between, um, between outbreaks and warm water situations. So they can't pin that as a reason. I saw that a 2016 study found that the number of deaths around Oregon uh, seemed to increase with cooling water temperatures. Really? So that's, rather than that's the opposite. Rather, yeah. So like sometimes they see it in like warming waters will cause it will cause increased deaths, but then they found they just found that in Oregon the opposite was happening. So that study just concluded by saying we need more research to be able to, to like predict these outbreaks. There are so whenever like doing anything in science, there are so many studies that end with we need more research. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's very rare that something. Um, ends with a uh, a definitive answer. Well, because like a lot of times they have to make it, they have to conclude, and they if they don't have enough information to make a conclusion that's like it seems to be correlated, but you know this that this way and that way, or they discover but more if, variables. Yeah, so if they're if if their questions just lead to more questions, they just have to be like, well, the conclusion is we need instead of just being like we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, the conclusion is we need more study. It's a good diplomatic answer. It's better than saying the conclusion is this, even though we don't have uh, evidence for it. Making stuff up to support claims. Yeah, and I, I imagine it also shields you from bad peer review, you know? It's like if, if you're concluding. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you did this study, Dr. Henderson, and you said... No, 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 no. I said that we need more research. I always say that we need more research. I'm never wrong. <laughs> so there's a zoo in Washington that lost more than 250 of its starfish to this problem. Um, and so it even happens in controlled environments. Right. So it's not something that necessarily came from, or like they had a, they got a starfish, like uh, from like a rehab starfish or something like that. Um, and brought it into their tank and it spread to the other starfish. That seems like it would be a disease then. If it's if it's not necessarily... If, if you have a controlled environment where they don't have it and then you introduce a sick one. They're, they're, I mean, when I say that they're not 100% sure it's a disease, they know it's a disease. It's just when it comes to being 100% sure about something, they there there is just not enough... Um, evidence or studies done but it's it's pretty much a disease because the zoo in washington uh, managed to stop the spread of it uh with antibiotics so the that that pretty much means it was either bacteria or a virus interesting but yeah so that's the uh that's all i got this is sunflower starfish it's they're down there's these 
giant saucer sized 24 leg armed you know writhing things that are extremely predatory and are ripping their own arms off at the bottom of the ocean it's just bad it's just scary like world the world is scary you got anything else uh i do not all right so for you out there in podcastia stay inside stay active and keep your limbs close at hand like a healthy sunflower sea star here in life death and taxonomy Hey everyone, Carlos here for our weekly plea for reviews and measure ups. Every one we get helps us a lot and reminds us that people are out there enjoying our interesting animal info and we're not just talking to the air. We love hearing from you in any way, shape, or form. So leave a review, send a measure up intro, or recommend an animal to us by emailing us or reaching out via Facebook or Twitter. You can also visit us on our website. We are LD Taxonomy everywhere. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. My favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> Good advice again. I'm I, I'm just, like it makes me super happy that like we're recording remotely because I can just cough <laughs> and you could just delete it as long as I'm not talking.